Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you, whether at home or here in the building. It's really wonderful uh, to be able to share with you this morning. And yes, I'm talking about creation, and I want to also talk about the awesomeness of God. Last week, um, Steve gave us a bit of a challenge, and he said, um, not wanting to misquote you, Steve, (laughs) he said that um, we need to allow ourselves to be challenged by Scripture. And as we go through the Old Testament, or at least through part of it, as we go through Genesis, there are going to be bits that challenge us. The, the God that we talk about, the God of love and Jesus and his ministry, sometimes can feel a bit in conflict with the God of the Old Testament. Now, I don't believe that there needs to be a conflict, but it can sometimes feel like that or seem like that. And we have assumptions or we've made um, decisions on the Old Testament based on what feels comfortable to us. And maybe that needs to be challenged. I want to talk about the awesomeness of God. And I apologize because I know it's a word from kind of my generation. Um, So for some, it will seem too young and for others, it will seem too old. But I think it really sums up what I want to express this morning. The word also means something that is impressive or daunting. And it can cause feelings of admiration, respect, or of fear. Now, I know if I was to just preach straight on Genesis chapter 1 and 2 um, and give my sort of theological point of view that I might fall out with some of you. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to fall out with you. I know that we have some different theological viewpoints. And I'm not going to tell you what mine is. I'm going to be a little bit sneaky and cheeky and not let that out the bag. Because I don't think that's the thing that we should be focusing on today. But what I do want to say is, whatever your theological standpoint is, or whether you have none yet and you're still thinking about it, let's leave ourselves open to be challenged. So if you um, are a person who thinks, well, maybe creation didn't happen in, in seven days, but in seven periods of time, then allow yourself to be challenged that actually God could have done it in seven days because he's God and he's bigger than us. Or if your viewpoint is that God did creation in seven days and we should take um, Genesis chapter 1 and 2 very literally, then allow yourself to be challenged that actually God may have done it in a different way to how we, we read it in the scripture. And that might sound all a bit confusing, but the reason I'm saying that is because God is awesome. He is so much bigger than we can understand. He is so much greater than we are. And it's wonderful, isn't it, that we have theology and we have science and we can think about it and we can work it out to a certain extent. Isn't that fantastic? And I'm all for that debate. But at the same time, let's remember that God is bigger than us and that we will only ever understand in part. And so it's not worth falling out over. But there are three things that I think we can peg our sort of creation thinking around that we can all agree on. And those things, those three things point us to thinking about this awesome God of ours. So in the beginning there was God and there was nothing else. We can't imagine. We can't imagine that nothingness. It's very difficult for us to imagine that nothingness. And we know that God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit were all present at creation. In in Genesis chapter 1, it says, And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And we know that God spoke creation into being. And that was Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. Have any of you ever spoken something into being? I know I haven't. I'd love it. Wouldn't that be amazing? Chicken roast. Yeah, wouldn't that be so cool? But that's actually God's power, not ours. In the beginning, there was God and there was nothing else. And God, in his great love, decided to create. And when God created, God saw that it was good. Now, we're looking at 
creation before the fall at the moment today, though I'm sure that will be taken on to the next stage next week. But let's just hold on to that, that what God created was good. I find it fascinating that there are still um, discoveries of new species um, happening in the world. I find it fascinating that until David Attenborough, um, I think it was the series Planet that he did it, or was it Deep, some deep Blue Sea or something, suddenly we found out about all this sea life that we never knew about for all these years. I just find that fascinating that there is always something more to learn and to understand. And it is good. God had a good plan, a good design. And God created mankind in his image. That's you and me, isn't it? Mankind. We're mankind. Human beings were created in God's image. And what does that mean? Well, it means that when I look at you and you look at me, we can see something of God in each other. Do we look for something of God in each other? Maybe it's a challenge where relationships are strained to look for something of God in each other. But what a delight as well to know that when I meet with you and I spend time with you, okay, not during lockdown, but when I do, I see something of God and I know something of God. And it is good. God saw that it was good. And the psalmists, you see, they've known about this awesomeness of God. They knew that we cannot fully understand God. In Psalm 147, verse 5, The psalmist said, his understanding has no limit. In Psalm 145, verse 3, his greatness none can fathom. In Psalm 139, verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And Paul, who we all respect a lot from the the New Testament, he says, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit who is from God. And as Rachel read in Psalm 8, verse 4, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? Because God is awesome. He is huge. He is outside of time. We cannot even begin to fathom that sentence, can we? That he is outside of time, the Alpha and the Omega. And yet, God cares for his people deeply and personally and each one of us can have a personal relationship with him and he is interested in the detail of your life not just mankind as a collective but in each and every individual. Now I don't know about you but have you ever been somewhere in God's creation where you felt like the ground is swelling up and the rocks are crying out? Creation wasn't created to serve us so we had somewhere to live. Creation was created to worship God as part of God's expression of his love and of himself. We can experience our awesome God in his awesome creation. And yesterday I went to Minions with my children and the two boys, as you know, they're very lively, lots of energy. And, you know, it was a day that was misty, There was mizzle and there was cloud and we couldn't see even from the front of the church to the back of the church. And yet, they had such delight running around up there. They really enjoyed the freedom. The whoops and the shouts of glee were just such a blessing to me as they ran from this pile of snow to to that hole in the ground and they kept finding these sheets of ice Anyone that follows me or is with me, or I don't know what the correct terms is, but on Facebook anyway, <laughs> I've posted a photograph of them with these massive sheets of ice that they, that they found. It's just fantastic. They were worshipping in that situation. They were glorying in God's creation. What a joy that we can do that. And what an opportunity. Steve mentioned, and he told me this morning that it's actually Simon Ponsonby who originally said it, um, but he mentioned about how when Jesus walks into the room, we shouldn't run out in fear, but we should stand back in awe. That 
That's what God is. He's so awesome that we just have to stand back and go, wow. And it's awe, it's respect, it's admiration. It's a little bit of fear, but not the kind of fear that means you're afraid. It's a holy fear that makes you say, this is much greater than me. And we get to experience that. And um, as I was trying to think about how to kind of wind all these thoughts up together, I thought again about that image of the room and of Jesus walking in and people standing back in awe. But in the corner at the side, there was a group of people having a quite a heated debate. And I couldn't tell you what they were debating, but they were just distracted and they didn't notice that Jesus came in the room. And I just thought, Lord, I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be um, my experience. I want to be focused on you. And so, yeah, it's great, isn't it, to debate. And um, as I said in the first service, you know, the, the, the staff here at the church, and um, we've got Niall and Steve and I in the building at the moment, and Liam, um, and Phil was here earlier. You know, we love it, actually. We love to pull the Bible apart and really think about it and, and you know, wonder and, and, and try and work it all out, how it fits together and see the bigger picture. But if we're so busy doing that that we don't see Jesus, then it's no good, is it? So where is our focus? Is it on the detail of how God does it, how God did it, how God does it, or is it on the, the awesomeness of, wow, God did it? It's really hard, isn't it, as humans to accept that we can't fully understand something. We, lo- we want to know. We like to know. We want to have things organized and in, in order. But with God, we can't do that. And we know that we can't do that with him because he is outside of our understanding. He is bigger and greater. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't enjoy trying to find out more about him. And trying to discover and thinking and being, even being creative in that thinking and, and using the, the intelligence that God has given us. But our focus should always come back to the main thing, which is God in his awesome love for us. And so we're in this period of lockdown. It's been a tough week, hasn't it? It's been really hard for everyone, I think. I'm not sure there's anyone who could say they've had an easy week. If you have, bless you. I'm really pleased for you. Um, but while we're locked down and we're locked in and we're told to stay at home, which absolutely that's what we should be doing, following the guidelines. Let's take this opportunity because here we are in Cornwall where our home is a place of outstanding beauty. So let's take the opportunity to get into God's creation. You know, we've got time that perhaps we wouldn't normally have. Let's make the most of it. Because some of my most special times with the Lord have been on the cliff top, um, looking out at the horizon, or have been on a beach on my own, just singing out in praise, or have been sat atop Helmand Tor in solitude, looking out again and just praying and handing everything back over to God. Let's take those opportunities that we have to marvel at his creation and to marvel at our awesome God.